This conference will now be recorded. Oh, good. So, uh, as of now, we have uh, learned in so uh, in Angular, like what is Angular and why we need Angular and what is Angular module, the concept-wise. And then we learn what is Angular component. Then we created a couple of Angular components as well. Then we learn the data bindings, the property binding, the event binding. And then we learn the Angular pipes. So a lot of concepts we have learned as of now. So because these are the uh, basic blocks or the building blocks of any Angular application. So today we are going to learn the Angular service and what the dependency injection is. And we'll see that and how we can connect with the backend REST APIs. And if time permits, we'll see the routing as well. So first, uh, the Angular service. So service is, so in Angular we saw all are like class, right? Be it a component, be it a module, uh, everything is class at the end. So service is also a class which will have a certain business logic and how we differentiate between service and a component. So component generally will have all the logics around to just on the manipulation of component or manipulation of view so component class file will have only logic related to manipulation of your view but service is a place where we actually put our business logics and service is also again a class and services are used for common logic of features so anything which you want is a common can be shared across uh, different modules or different components we uh, ideally put that in services or any feature or a business logic whatever you're performing that has to go to your services so it's provide common data and logic can be shared across components uh, with services Angular services are singleton means one instance across app so in that way you can maintain the state of the application also uh, through angular services because it's singleton so one component can update it other component can read it so so basically you can have a state of the application as it's in singleton across app but there are ways if you don't want it to make it singleton that's also possible but default it's it's a single thing so angular inbuilt injector helps to create and manage singleton services so that is something called injector uh, class or lab is there which helps to create and manage to singleton services we'll see that and what is dependency injection so dependency injection is a pattern it's a general pattern apart from Angular in which a class gets instance of another dependent class. That's the dependency injection. So if my class is dependent on some other classes, then it gets the instance of those classes um, on whom uh, it depend on. So that is called dependency injection. And we'll see how we do dependency injection in Angular. Okay, so simple uh, and nothing uh, more of a complex things over here because Angular, the new Angular is really simple so that it's easy to understand. So, so we can create Angular services. So if you see an Angular services, it will look like this. Angular, so same way. If you need, we had a component decorator. We had a G module decorator, which was telling Angular, hey, this class is a module. 
a this class is a component similarly we have a decorator called injectable which we need to add before the class and then it will tell angular hey uh, this is this class is in service so that's how the decorator helps because at the end everything is class but based on the decorator and few metadata which we pass along with decorator helps angular to understand what that class is okay so this is a sample or a service example if you see we need to import injectable from angular core angular core is a core library of angular and then you have to put injectable then export class name and inside that there will be logic so we'll see that in our application where we can add services to what we have built as of now so if you remember we have a github application right and we created a github component which is part of it's a module and then we imported that module to our app module.ts so if you see every time we write a class we write export we need a module be it a component so if you don't export it no one can use it so if you export it the other classes can import it that's why the export and import funda is there so if you see here this data module got imported here because it got exported there if you remove that export command this import command will throw error and if you see one more difference let's say here in this file there are four import statements are there the last two import statements we have given some relative path if you see dot slash and then the component name you don't have to put the dot js or dot ts because by default we back resolved it but you just have to give the name of the file and similar way here also you can see there is a relative path is there but in the first two there is no path is there so behind the scene what happens is all uh, uh, module arrangement and everything happened by a web pack library so what that does if it doesn't find any relative path then it goes and search inside a node module that's what the standard is if it's a relative part it understand it's a it must be there in that relative path if there is no path defined if you see it just saying import this from angular code then what happens it try to resolve that angular code and it go and search inside node modules so that's basically a reference how it imports things from folder node modules where our actual libraries are there okay so in our application currently what is happening this we have uh, this github component.ts so here if you see we have some data called github users right which actually we are binding on our view in a table if you remember so or i can run that application so running the application you just have to type in g serve uh, inside a root folder of the application and then a local host server will get started all the compilation typescript to javascript conversion everything will happen behind the scene and then finally you just have to open the chrome and just say localhost 4200 and your application is ready so i was talking about this where you are seeing uh, the table right this table is coming from obviously some data which is there in component we are binding that so let's go back so ideally what happened in component you will not have any data so component what i mentioned it's on about your view manipulation so any code which your component will carry 
it's only related to view nothing more than that that's a standard practice so ideally your your business logic has to be in your services and if you talk about this component just is aware what it has to render it in view hey, sorry uh, how it has to render it in view but what it has to render that information your component doesn't carry so ideally it has to come from services where you'll have your business logic because this github users it's all about your business requirement because for component you just give me some data i'll just render it what data that's not a concern of component so for that what we'll do we'll create a service we'll create a github service and we'll see how things are working so to do that again we can do that from our command line uh, angular cli so what we'll say we'll say ng ng for angular g for generate we want to generate services as then i have to provide the service name so let's say we will, i'll give the service name as github so i want to get created inside github and i'll say dash dash flat because the folder is already exist i don't want to create a new folder so my service name will be github service cool now you can see the two file got created inside github folder uh, github service.ts github service spec.ts spec.ts is all about unit test file so i'll not talk about this now so let's talk about github service file and you see the template it's simple so there is a class uh, called github service and then the constructor uh, so constructor is nothing but a function which get called automatically when your class got an instance so whenever a class creates an instance the constructor function gets called automatically and then there is a decorator called at injectable and this decorator actually helps angular to understand hey, this is actually in service cool so now what we'll do here this github user this entire array which is over here we'll copy that basically we'll cut that from there and we'll put it inside a service so now service has to supply this data to the component and component is don't care what exactly the data is it does it just know how to render it so now we created a service which is having in data now we'll write a method so we'll write something kit github users so get github users means this method will help us to uh, get call the github users and i just will say return this dot github users simple so i have a method which actually returning this entire array that's all nothing else so so ideal scenario actually this data also not even will be there in the services hard coded it has to come from somewhere from your backend api uh, so this data ideally has to be there in some database and then on top of that database there should be some rest api which actually should give this data back to the client and then client should render it in view that's the ideal way of how application work but for demonstration purpose for now i just put it in service hard coded data and then i wrote a method yeah anything so we use uh, ajax uh, to make that call to a server api do we have yeah, we, any other service yeah. like that so angular has its in inbuilt service called uh, dollar http okay 
we use that so that's basically a wrapper on top of actual ajax javascript calls okay okay so for now we create a service so the service is responsible for just returning this github users this is done so now a service is ready but once you create any service that has to be registered in module then only it will get to know there is a service available in a module so go to github module.ts and if you see there is something called providers which is again an array and where you can put your kit of service so we see you have to register it because you, you can create any classes but until unless it has not registered as part of the module angular is not going to detect it so now angular is going to detect it and it will create an instance out of that because here we are saying hey uh, in github service is a part of github module now so anytime they create and so they read this file and they go to this decorator ng module and all the metadata which is there there we have to say providers and we have to provide the service name uh, which we have created that's all So once it's done, now what we can do, we can come to our GitHub component.ts. Now uh, that GitHub users is gone, right? So it's not there anymore in the component. So so now I have a blank array, but I have to fill it. So how to do that now? So what we'll do first, we'll create a DI, dependency injection. How we'll inject it in the services. So how we inject it in the constructor, we create an instance, let's say GitHub service. So I'll give my instance name GitHub service and I'll take the instance from this guy and I'll import it. So I have to import that service. So I imported that service in github component.ts and I created a local reference for that in a constructor function. I have to pass that in. So this is how we create it. private. I can give any name, but I've given the similar name and the actual service which actually got imported. So this is how you do a dependency injection. So what is dependency injection? So my class if it's dependent on some other classes then i should so my class should get the instance of that class so that i can use the class methods in my class so this is how we do it so we import it then we create a local instance of that and then i can use this local instance to access the methods and properties whatever is there in that class so ideally this has to so you can define a private and public so if i say private then now this github users no one can access directly it has they have to call get github users to get this github users so that's a because i don't want they to directly or anyone who is using the service to directly tap on to this github users variable because uh, if they can access they can edit also uh, so I don't want that so I want they have to access this through a my method that's called get github users which will actually return this github users cool so now what I have to do in ng on init so if you remember uh, what I mentioned ng on init is a method uh, or it's a kind of a lifecycle hook for a component which get called whenever your component got initialized so what we can do inside ng on init you can see this start github users the variable which we have created over here
I'm gonna assign it to this dot github service so service dot get github users if you remember I have mentioned anything any variable or any properties which has been defined inside your component if you want to use it you have to use it with this this dot so this is nothing but your current instance of the class so you want to access any property of your class you have to say current instance that is this dot and your property name so that's why i'm saying this dot github users which is actually just defined over here it could be any array that's what i'm saying equal to this dot github service which is nothing but a local instance of a github service and then the method of github service that's get github users so now what will happen we moved our uh, data to services now that service is actually serving us the data and i'm just calling that method which is giving me the github users and showing it back to my model or my property called github users so ideally application wise it should work as it is how it used to work because we have not changed anything as a requirement for only the thing as the behind the scene we made it more modernized now so now if we go back to our chrome well, it might have already loaded but still i load it again and you can see it's still working same still i'm getting my table record as it is uh, although now this table data is not coming from components basically now it's coming from a services so now service is serving the data to component and component is rendering it to view so now we learn what, how to create a service a simple service and how we can do a dependency injection basically inject that service to some other blocks like component or you can inject the service to another service as well and now how you can call the methods of the service to uh, get the data so your service will have ideally multiple methods a service can have its properties also but that's not a good practice so every time you want to have something it should have some method you can call that method like get set or any competition if any business logic you can put it over there okay so let's go back to slide and we see what's next okay so this i think i have already explained but the slide uh, talks about that now so there is something called service provider right so this provider helps to register the service and return the service class we saw that once we created a service we went to angular module and in that angular module there is a metadata called providers which actually receives array of services and then you give your service name so this is basically we register the service and to register the service it has to be this defined uh, as part of angular component or angular module method okay so so what we did we register the service in module you can register the service against the component also that also possible so let's say you have created a service which will be having business logic and things like that and you know this service is only going to be used by my one component no other component in that case what you can do you can even register the service against component as well instead of module so once you register it against mod, uh, module uh, or defined as part of module what happens any component which is part of that module will get access to that service but if you just define as part of angular component then only that component will have access to that service so that's the difference between where you have register your service so how to do in component if you're thinking so we go to a component code 
And if you remember the similar way we have a component decorator, how in module we have in G module decorator. Here we have some iterators, you just have to say same. You have to say providers, it's an array, and provide that service name. So with this statement, you are registering the services as well as you are importing it and then as well you have to get a local instance of that service and you can get it worked so this is another way of registering the services okay go back to slide again Okay, so this also it's showing up here again, but I have already shown that in code. So this slide talk about how you do injection. And we learned that already. So you have to create a local instance of that service in your constructor. So in, in constructor function, you have to pass the local instance and which will be nothing but a reference to your actual service and we saw that uh, this is how we created and we already did that in our code so this is how you do uh, angular service injection so you have to put it in a constructor is nothing but it's a function if you can see and in that function you have to pass the local instance of that service so that in your class it can get used and that local instance will be of type your actual service. Okay, so some best practices of a component. So, so this for the moment I'll skip. I'll come back to this later. The now we'll talk about how even the, the, this data ideally should not come from service hardcoded right it has to come from your rest api then uh, even before that what is a uh, rest apis you know so rest apis are nothing but it's an api which has written on top of your uh, tables because uh, at the end or uh, the table will which hold the data then there will be api which will be connecting to those tables uh, to do all the operation the crud operations basically crud is nothing but create read update and delete so that's what we call it the crud operations so all the scrud operations means creating a record reading a record updating a record and deleting a record in table so all these operations for that you need to write some apis so those apis now should be capable of reading writing or to the table and now those apis uh, so rest is nothing but it's a standard by which we write those APIs. Again, this course is, uh, so this REST API standard is out of scope for learning Angular. That's again a separate topic altogether to discuss. But for a high level, REST APIs are uh, nothing but it's a pattern. Uh, so by which you create an API and those APIs can connect with your DB to read and write. So as a client, because I'm talking about Angular client side application development. So as a client, I have to call those APIs to write or write the data. So that's the whole structure will be. So in Angular to do that, there are uh, libraries which Angular uses to do that. That's basically your observables and RxJS. RxJS is nothing but it's called reactive extensions and what these are now so so observables are actually helps to achieve asynchronous patterns so if you see this is now come to asynchronous programming right because 
Synchronous programming is what you have a set of commands or the line of codes. It will get executed one by one in a way. Uh, so, so first line will get executed, then the next line will get executed, then third line will get executed, and then there will be a function call, then that function will get executed and then it will come back again so like that the execution happens but in the async pattern what happens so let's say you are connecting with a backend api so that backend api will not give you result immediately because this execution happens in milliseconds right and when you connect to the backend you might take one second or 500 millisecond or 300 millisecond or even two second based on your network speed and all other factors your program cannot wait for that time right the program has, has to execute the next line of code so what it happens you call that function and then it, uh, which will actually give you the data after two seconds let's say for an example then it doesn't stop here there it go back and execute the next lines of code but what it happens it's keep a track of that function and it knows it will come after some time what happens anytime the response comes after that time let's say two seconds it goes back to that pointer again and it execute the code which actually has to be executed after getting the response so that is called uh, the asynchronous pattern the asynchronous programming so in javascript there are multiple patterns or uh, multiple style of doing asynchronous pattern one is your callback pattern uh, then the promises and here what we're talking about this is like observables so in callback what happens uh, so your function will call some another function and there you will register two more functions you will say hey if you get a success call this function take from me and if you fail call this function so that's what the callback work, works so you you will pass two functions to the actual function uh, which is not your which on which you are dependent on what will do you will pass two functions to that function on which you are dependent on and then we'll say see take these two functions or any function or one function also you can pass it on and you see see once you are done you just execute this function that's your say so once he is done he will execute that function that's called callback and the other one is promises so promises we used to work in angular one and what happened in promises promises we say so we call another function on which we are dependent on which is supposed to give us data or anything else then what we do that what that function do that says hey i can't give you the data immediately but instead of that what i can give you i can give you a promise object so basically promise object is nothing but a promise to return give you something after some time so instead of giving the actual data it gives the promises promise object and on that promise object you can register a function so what happens anytime that promise object actually it actually return the data whatever the functions you have registered against that that will get called so that's called your promise style of doing a synchronous pattern and now what the observables do observables work on a subscribe and register model so now let's say i'm dependent on some other function so i have to subscribe to that function 
So what I'll do, I'll go and subscribe to that function. So anytime that function returns a success or failure, because I have subscribed to that, I'll I I'll get to know if anything anytime it emits the data because once it subscribe, what will happen? That function will emit the data. So observables they what they do when they run it, and if they get the data, they emit the data. And if you have subscribed to it, you will get that data. And once you get that data, you can use it. That's what this observable patterns. So I explained just now the three different patterns or three different styles of doing asynchronous programming. One is with your callback. The other one is promise. And the third one is your observables. So currently Angular uses observables. You can use promise as well. Now we'll see how to use observables to do async programming. Because as of now, whatever you've developed, we just have done synchronous programming. So Angular uses the observable and RxJS library to do this asynchronous programming. So in a React extension or RxJS, uh, an observer subscribes to an observable. So an observable will subscribe to an observable and then that observer reacts to whatever item or sequence of item observable emits that's how it works right so observer is nothing but my function and observable is on which function i'm dependent on so i'll subscribe to that and i'll react or i will do some set of steps whenever the observables emit something so that's how it works and observables are different from promises as i explained promises different promises one to one so i called a function that function will tell hey i can't give you whatever you want now but i can i can give you a promise so that i'll get it after some time then i'll take that promise and on that promise i'll register my function and whenever i get data then my functions which has been registered against that promise i will i'll get the data in that way so that's a different way of doing uh, programming observables are like a guy which is just emitting the things if you subscribe to it you'll get the data that's how the observable works okay so we'll see how we can do this in our application so that we'll have a bit of more understanding. Okay, so now what we'll do, we'll connect with our backend data, right? So, okay, even before that, we have to understand from which backend API this data will come. So for that, there are APIs, the GitHub APIs. That's like API dot GitHub dot com. Slash users slash and So this is a public API which has been exposed by GitHub. Anyone can use it for personal purpose, but for business purpose, if you want to use it, then you have to use their token. But for personal purpose, it's all free. You don't have to do any authentication. You don't need any token from them. So we're just using for personal purpose, so that's fine. But the API name is this github.com slash user slash angular so this is basically a rest api which is responding as in json so if you see uh, these are the properties which i am getting it from here only i've taken few uh, which we are using 
So now I have to connect with this API and get the data and render it in maybe. That's what I want. Not the hard coded data is currently sitting in our services. So to do that, what I have to do? So for that, I'm dependent on a service called dollar HTTP. I'm just taking a reference of my old code to make sure about the right service name. Yeah, HTTP client is a class which you are dependent on. So we need to go to our service and then we can use it. So we'll go back to our file and what we'll do after we'll say private. HTTP client similar to beta your own service Hey, are you guys able to hear me now? Looks like some issue with the go to meeting. Yes, Patru, I can hear you. Okay, in between, I think it disconnected, right? Yes. Okay. So, what I was talking, uh, so we need uh, we dependent on HTTP client, which is again Angular inbuilt class, which actually uh, helps us to connect with a backend API. So once you do that, then we can use, so we'll remove this guy. And then we have to actually use this dot HTTP client dot get. So that's the method name, which we will, so get is basically for your get operation. And so read operation so in the crud cre create read update delete is right so for create it's a post um, for read it's a get 
for updated and update for deleted and delete so get so get needs and url which we want to uh, get the data and our url is i'll copy that from here Okay, just a minute. I think I'm using the wrong URL because this URL will give me the entire different data. I think I've written some mocky URL. I'll use that. So what I've did, I created a mocky API. The mock API basically. So let me get that, which actually gives the similar data which we wanted to buy so okay so this is our mock key uh, url so i have uh, so you can create any api for mock purpose so i've created a mock api which actually respond these three data which uh, we need in our uh, view so we'll hit this api for now and later we'll hit the api github and we'll see what it's going so Now with this, you are good to get the data. That's all. But now, how to pass that data to next? These all things we have to see. And this is already throwing an error now because this guy is no more returning beta users. So that's already failing. So now, what to do? So now with this, you are you will not believe you are good enough to connect with the backend data. But now, because it's an asynchronous programming. So we have to create that observable over here. So this. Do you need? Okay. Do we need to give a colon after let? Okay. So colon is only required if you want to assign some type to it. Oh no! I mean uh, semicolon in the end of the statement. Oh, okay. Okay. That's yeah. So if you forget the uh, browser yeah. engine is smart. They detect it. Okay. There has to be some color. They don't throw any error for that. But anyway, oh, yeah, I, you should. Okay. I thought the error was because of that. I didn't know that. No. No, the error is because before this get GitHub users used to return uh, this variable get GitHub users. So my mm -hmm. component is expecting that, which I removed it. That's why there is an error oh. in the component. You can see. That. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is more than enough to connect with a backend API, but the problem is now because it will take some time, some time to get the data. So I cannot just do something like this. This is not going to work. Okay, I'll remove this private data from here. So why this is not going to work? Because when you call HTTP client dot get and you're connecting with the backend API, it will not give you response immediately. And this statement, what it looking, it looking for a response immediately, which will not be the case because this will just get executed in fraction of millisecond and will move on to the next line. And by that time, you might not have get the response, which your response will nothing but a data which will be coming from the API. This statement is not going to work. So otherwise, if this statement has worked, I could have done this and then I could have done return GitHub users. Uh, that like be a, cool one. a quick question. Uh, yeah. So uh, Ajax has a feature where we can turn it off like the asynchronous thing. Uh, is there any other like that option here 
where you can make the default behavior asynchronous behavior of uh, the get into a synchronous behavior just for this thing to work i'm just curious to know that so yeah so if anything there in the ajax label obviously it can be uh, do on top of that but i'm not sure whether angular has uh, okay. exposed that to this label or not okay uh, but ideally no one prefers to do that that's not a because right. in that way what you're doing you're stopping your programming execution at that point right yeah but in this case it's just like you said it's going to take uh, a few uh, seconds to get that data so we won't realize that but like in real life application you wouldn't want to do that yes so this is not going to work so for this we need to create now observables so how to create observables now so to create an observable so i'm just in the interest of time uh, i am just copying this method and then i'm explaining what you have to do so it's simple uh, so here you have to say this function should return observable so you have to write it has to return observable because it's not getting any reference of observable that's why it's added so now it's observable of what type so you can for now you can say any any type of observable it can return or you can st strictly type it also no i want it to be returned in that way but for demonstration i'm just making it any and then what you have to do in this you have to return this statement so i don't need to return this so what will happen this http client dot get itself returns an observable so it's so sorry so yeah so it's still in a reserve observable so now this function turns it to an observable just by saying this function will return an observable and just you have to put a return statement before that so i just don't want to complicate this i'll talk about this later catch in two so with this you are done we are good to go so see what changes i did i just say this function has to return observable and i said type any type of observable and i just put a return after this dot http client dot get that's all and now what i have to do in my component instead of this i have to say this dot now because this is an observable i can subscribe to it and inside a subscribe you can see subscribe is a function now and in that uh, function i can pass another function and here what i'll do i'll say this dot github users equals so i can receive data here and then assign the data because it's an observable it can have now a subscribe method so i have subscribed to it and in that subscribe method i can pass another function this is like anonymous function because this doesn't have any name to it and in that function i can expect data and once that i get the data i assign it so i and i'll, I'll get this data after some time i'll not get this data immediately so i have just subscribed to it whenever the data will come that observable will emit it once it emitted my this function which is there inside this subscriber will get it so now if i save this and if i go back to my application something is wrong i can go to the console static injector github service is http client 
no provider for HTTP client. Cool. So what's happening? So anytime. Uh, so what we did, we directly use HTTP client over here. But to use HTTP client, you have to import something in the module. That part I have missed. So I have to import the HTTP client module also. So either I can do in my module here. So what I have to do, I have to do this statement because HTTP client class. So why I'm doing that? I'm explaining that. So HTTP client class, which we have used in our GitHub service, which is actually part of your HTTP client module. So without the module, you cannot use its class. So first you have to import that module. So that part I was missing. So that's why it throws an error saying it doesn't know what the HTTP clients we are using it over there. So now I have imported the module. So that's what the modular structure will work. So any class you want to use, you have to use its module. First, you have to import its module. Now all the class of that module is available to you. We can go ahead and use it. So now I imported that. Now if I go back to my application again. I can see my application is working as it is. I'm getting the data. So there is no change to the application. It's again working as it is. That's what the expectation should be, right? But only we move the data from our service to an API. And now the API is now serving us the response. And we are using it. <laughs> Right, so let's say we want to debug it. So you can go to a network tab. I mentioned the network tab, which has shows all the network calls, which happening between your client over the network. If you go to the network tab, if you refresh this guy, if you see the first file, the first thing which is getting loaded here is the local host. If you click on that local host, if you see, that is nothing but your HTML page, the index.html. And once that happened, you see the bootstrap got loaded because in the index.html, you're telling it to load the bootstrap. And then all the JGS files, inline bundle.js, polyfill bundle.js, style bundle.js, vendor bundle.js, main bundle.js. And then this is our API call, which we are doing. So we are calling this API as soon as an application is loading, right? Because in a component on in it, we are calling that get GitHub user method and that get GitHub user method behind the scene calling this API, the Mocky IO one, uh, which I have just created a mocked API. And if it's 200, okay, that means it's success. If you go to the review, you can see what the response I got it. I got this response and this is the same response and binding here angular jQuery and react if you remember before it was hard coded and jQuery has repeated twice. But now we have a new uh, record that's about react So angular jQuery and react. And this is exactly the same data. If you see 169, 169, 45 and 29. Public repos. I'm just checking just for it. So this is how you can see it. And if you want to debug, we can go to the source tab. In the source tab, the best part is you can see your JavaScript file as well as you can see your TypeScript file. So you can debug on your TypeScript file also because de debugging JavaScript file is difficult because those are JavaScript file has been generated from combining all your TypeScript files. So it will be a bit hard to read. If you want to see, you see the main bundle.js. It's very hard to read here. Or inline bundle.js. It's not easy to read. So that's why you can go to your webpack. 
src now you can see all your files over here and you can put a breakpoint on that so let's say i put a breakpoint over here just to understand what the data is coming so when then if i reload my app you see that breakpoint got hit yeah so now the breakpoint got hit and now you can hover over this and you can see the what's happening cool so this is what a breakpoint can do and this is how we debug if anything goes wrong and when it will help to debug right so i'll show you that so what happened let's a scenarios because of some reason i messed up my url i mistakenly one url text got added at the end which is actually should not be see url i got added over here i saved it i go back to my browser and i see i'm not seeing my table where is the table i'm not seeing it and neither the breakpoint got hit right that means something is wrong see my breakpoint didn't got hit means this line number 21 never got executed then i want to be interested what happens to service so let me open the service file then github dot service dot ts let's put a breakpoint over here that got hit i got the url but after that what to do i i i don't know how to do that so now then you have to write a program in a better way so that you can handle the failures currently you are not handling the failures at all so to handle the failure now we can write here dot catch so this dot catch will help us to catch the error so to add this dot catch i have to do this dot catch so this dot catch now will handle the error and here we can say this dot or we can do anything so basically it has to come to a catch block now so you can pass a function inside that and you can do console.log error I don't know, it's throwing some error. Void is not assignable to parameter of type. What's wrong? I am doing. either okay we'll do that what wrong we're doing either you can have a catch over here but it's not working i'll find it out so in subscribe also if you see we pass one function similarly you can pass another function next to that and so what happens if any error happens it will go and execute the second function. So if you saw, because it's a success, it executes the first function, which we pass to the subscribe method. If any error happens, it will execute the second function, uh, which you can pass as well. So now if we go ahead and 
it. So now we'll remove a breakpoint from here. And I'll add a breakpoint. It has not loaded. What happened? I have not saved that file. I have not saved it. Okay, I saved it now. Then you might be seeing some lags, so I am just waiting. Okay, now you can see we have error. So I put a breakpoint over there also now. And now I will refresh it again. Now you see we got a big point hit on the error block. Now if we see read error, we can see that error 500 internal server error, HTTP failure response from this. So now we'll go ahead and check why we got 500 and then only you can figure it out, the URL is not right, right? Because that's why it's failing. So this is how you you can have your catch block also, or the error block also in your function which is actually consuming the data. So there itself you can have error block and I did that. So that's why I get another hit uh, on some error. So this is how you debug. And if I go and see the network also and you can see things are failing. That's why it's going to error block. So now go ahead and fix this URL. Save it back. Go back. And it's get loaded and my table came up. So now we saw how to connect with the backend data. So I just talked about get now. Similarly, post put, things are there, which I'll talk in our coming sessions. But you see, this is not that difficult, right? How many lines of code we just written? Just one line, kind of, because this is just a variable assignment. I just say this dot http dot client dot get pass the URL. I made that function as an observable and then my component just have to call that because it's an observable I can subscribe to it and once I subscribe it I can pass the functions the first function which will pass to the subscribe method will get executed if it success if it success means the function which you have subscribed to it if that success then it will emit success you'll get success and with success, we'll get the data also. If it fails, it emits the error and actually it executes the other function, uh, the error for block, and you get the error as well. So, with this, you can handle the error scenario also. So, with this, I uh, don't want to move to router so I want to stop it here uh, so that you'll get a will not get a hangover of a lot of concepts on a single day so if any questions on how to create service how to inject the service how to connect with backend you can ask um, I have a quick question uh, yeah. like uh you showed us um, there were you created a error um, while uh, injecting http client uh, mm -hmm. so there we saw that uh, the missing thing was to include it in module uh, yeah. so uh, how do you know that it is a, a http module that has to be included http client module and it is not a HTTP client service. How did you know that? Oh, okay. So that you can know from the documentation, the Angular oh, okay. UI uh, documentation. Oh, okay. So if you search for client 
so if i go to browser okay. and i have this open right so you go and search here saying http client and i get a lot of reference so i go to the http client so this will say what you need uh, what all dependencies uh, require and things like that okay so it's just something which you will know by practice yeah so this i do so no so from error also so from error you saw uh, so i know I, i'm okay. not sure if you remember not it it's it told it doesn't know what http client is okay so why it's not knowing so you have to think obviously something is missing the mm -hmm. includes uh, then you'll get to then obviously if you don't know you'll come here and you'll see the documentation and you'll go to know you need a module to be right. also included okay. yeah okay so uh, in uh, a real real life application uh, there will be a, uh, errors error handling will be done in similar fashion like how you showed it will be handled in the component yeah so there will be one level of handling at the component but there will be one top level handling in your uh, services also so that depend on your uh, architect so sometimes what happens in the in the real application uh, what we do we create a core service or a common service so any service other services whichever has to connect to backend api they have to pass that core service and that core service actually responsible for connecting with a uh, database so that you'll have more control why more control i'm asking because in the real scenarios your urls will not be just that you hit the url get the response you have to pass the authorization you have to pass the headers you have to pass the token so those mm -hmm. all things also you have to control it for all the apis so in the real application we create one core services and that core services job is just to get some url and the data and form a request and hit to the backend api and there only you can handle your uh, errors and if success you just return it then the other service will get it again it will return it and then your component will get it so it will be like one more layer you will be creating to okay. have more control on your application that's like i'm talking about the actual real a big application when you have to modularize the things okay but it's all same if you know the concept you can uh, build those things so we will uh have our error handling routine in that common or core services and then we'll show some uh, some some way to let the user know that error has occurred so there yeah all so those in, things. Okay. in the core services what you can do once the error happens you can directly navigate to a, a page right you say something went wrong something says we saw similar pages right sometime in the application right uh, something went wrong or try after some time things like that so you we can provide those messages so basically once the error happens you can uh, pass that error to your services which actually has called it uh, or you can control from there itself to uh, navigate to some other screen and things like that so those things are possible you will have more okay. control okay yeah here also uh, i can show you on next class how we can handle the error in services itself and how we can show some messages and things like that, that i can show you. okay anything else uh, guys uh, for from today's session uh, no i'm good uh, except that you will send the videos right today yeah i'll make sure the videos are reaching to you yeah. guys uh, today uh, today Thanks. i think it's all late for you maybe tomorrow yeah okay okay so with this then uh, thank you guys for joining today's session uh, see you on my next session thanks bye bye bye